Osaige Izeiyamo has been groomed from childhood about the importance of duty from the living example set by his father, late Chief Robert Osayende Izeiyamo, the Esobo of Great Benin Kingdom. Born in 1962, his life of duty has been reflected in his primary, secondary and tertiary education, all in Benin. I grew up at my family house at Terrier, which incidentally is an historical monument, the first story building in Benin. It was a very lovely one. We were one big happy family. Even though my father had more than one wife. Her parents mentored us to be a blessing to our society. We mentored us to appreciate each other. We never even knew that we were actually supposed to be different because we were from different mothers. No, we were one. That will tell you how we're shielded from those kind of divisions at a very early age. As he grew older, I began to see so many positive things about him. I had a wonderful time growing up. I went to public schools, but I got the best education. In his formative year, right all the way from his secondary school day, he had always stood out against injustice. He had always had his leadership qualities. These were qualities he has been imbued with over time. One of the most interesting things about Pastor that is still so relevant today is that from the beginning, he has always been a crowd puller. In secondary school, his friends are always around the house. By the time he got into the universities, his friends made our home. Their second home. We had a large compound where we could play football. So you can imagine how popular and busy our house was, especially when my father was not home. It got to a stage my father had to instruct the people cooking, keep food for Saige's friends every weekend. My father saw something in him that most of us did not see. As we grew older, we, we saw that he has an inborn leadership role in him. At a very early age, Osage Izeiyamo understood that to serve is not just by what you say, it is also by your lifestyle choices. When he was admitted into the great University of Benin, his deep love for policy and leadership became evident during his university days as a student of law. In 1980, when my Fellow students are thinking of going to parties. At my own expense, I will leave the invest to go and attend youth meetings of UPA, sit down and brainstorm on how we can win more people to our party. So I was interested from a very early time. He's practically one or few of the political major domos just now in Edo State who's lived all his life, all his life here. Yeah. My love. For this place, it was good for me. Of course, by the time we graduated, things have changed, uh, jobs are no longer there. Everybody started living. There was a time in Benin, people were laughing at me for being around. But today, I thank God that whereas they went abroad for universities and stayed some time, I stayed back. It has paid off. After law school, when serving in a law firm, he was contributing to the political landscape, and as a result of his passion and love for service, he then became a special assistant from 1988 to 1989 to Loki Nosakhari Ibenedion when he was the chairman of Redo Local Government Council. It was in 1999 that Osaige Izeyamu was appointed chief of staff by Loki Ibenedion, who then became governor of Edo State. In 1987, I played a major role in the emergence of Loki Ibenedion chairman of the Old Oredo. He appointed me a special assistant to himself in council. In the eight years he served as chief of staff or as secretary to the state government, it was the engine room. Every achievement that that administration recorded, you could particularly attribute to Pastor Zagi Izeyano. But what many people also don't know is that I've done other things. People think, oh, Pastor, all he has ever done is politics. It's not true. When I graduated in law, I decided to work with some of my friends. We formed a partnership. It was a law firm with offices in Benin and Lagos. And it was good. After a while, I found out that the call in politics was so strong. And politics is so giving an avenue to be able to care for others. In life's journey, nothing compares with the finding of true love, that soulmate and partner that nourishes and supports a vision. Marriage is the best thing that has ever happened to me. When I look at my days before I got married and I look at my life now, it's remarkable. When the Bible says, He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord, if you are looking for somebody that would confirm that verse, I think it's, it's me and my wife. I 
I first met my husband, Osage Zegam, when I was a house officer in Luth in 1990. It's been a beautiful marriage. She's been extremely supportive, very understanding. She led me to the Redeemed Christian Church of God because she has always been a foundation member. Osage is a very kind person. He's very, very kind. He's very, very loving. He showers so much love on his children. When you have that kind of uh, harmony at home, it helps you to relate outside. It gives you an inner strength, knowing that the home is at peace. As he grew stronger in life and in principles, Osage Izeyabo found a deeper and a much more purposeful relationship and service to God while serving his people as a leader. Osage loves people and he loves to impact positively on people's lives. So I'm not surprised at the way his life is going. He did law, which has to deal with people. He's a pastor, which has to deal with people. And a politician, which also has to deal with people. So there has not been something God has inputted in him that makes him always want to affect people's life. Outside politics and religion, Pastor Sagi Zeyamo has devoted very, very quietly a lot of scholarship support to thousands of young men. A lot of people have become graduates today. A lot of people have been able to set up their businesses today. A lot of people have been able to travel overseas today due to his emotional and financial investment. Maybe because of his pastoral calling, he has decided to, to keep this outside the radar of the public. If you are wealthy and those around you are poor, you are poor. To be able to appreciate wealth, you must learn how to spread it. It's a leadership by example, my dad, Professor Bruce Folon Shirali. And also Pastor Isaiah Yamu is also a leadership by example. His desire to constantly use every opportunity effectively as a means of serving his people as a leader saw him venture into business and the creation of capacity building infrastructures. I looked at Benin and I saw young men not doing anything and I said, no, let me start a farm. I believe that the easiest way to engage our people is through agriculture. So I set up a farm and I also decided that I will complement it with a training center. I will bring youths to the farm and I will train them. Iowa Farms Training Institute, a model farm settlement in Benin City, has turned out hundreds of young agriculturists achieving its aim of agricultural training, skills acquisition and empowerment of youths within the state, in Nigeria and also youths from different parts of the continent. There are many people I meet outside, they say, sir, you don't remember me. I'm a graduate of Iowa Farms. There's nothing that gives you more joy. It was because of that passion which he had to empower you. And he felt that the best way to empower them was to train them, give them the skill which can feed them. Working with him has been exciting. He has been able to give us the room to expand the horizon of the things we do. The fact that he had a vision to establish a farm of that standard shows the kind of background that he's coming from. One of my great-grandfather was the first to rear pigs in Benin City. So one of the things I did at an early age was to dry pigs. We're talking about pigs in their hundreds. So you have to devise a way to shepherd them. And we used to do that or they would bring 200 pigs back home, 300 pigs. And you can imagine, in doing that, it means that you must connect with all the yeah. guys in the neighborhood. They all say, ah, oh, thank you, thank you, oh, see, your, see your pigs, see your pigs. And because I was so grassroots connected, I also entered into drafts, a local game. So you will see me in the barber shop playing draft. These are things that are seen to be local and I've been very involved in them. I'm deeply connected with our people. Yes, I live in GRA, but not the food. Most of the time, I'm with the grassroots. If you go through the 18 local governments, the 192 world in the district, there is no person who does not know the man called Pastor Sanyezeam. He has the structure. If he's sleeping, you wake him up and say, can you give me 20 or 50 names of leaders in every world in the state? He will not read any script. He will just start to name them. He knows them by their name, first name and their last name, the surname. He's a figure in every unit. It is only a great tree that stones will be thrown at. Every controversy he has been wrongfully accused of has only served to distract the people who need the state to serve them. But this made him even stronger, more focused, resilient in service, and also 
loved by his people. Most people that tell lies are people who are insecure, people who don't know who they are. The people that know him know that all these things are false. There's no way a man like him could continue to enjoy this kind of support if he's a bad person. Before you become a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, you must have salvation experience. You must go through believers class, workers in training, and then you build on. He has done that from the time he got born again. He has been a full pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God for over 14 years. So I can boldly tell you that this man, Pastor Saiki Eze Yamu, is a Christian, and he's a pastor. There's no conflict in being a pastor and being a politician. The Bible says that the people rejoice when the righteous are in authority and the people mourn when the wicked bear room. Anything that has to do with God is in it 1000%. Most especially church building. Every time he has been posted to a new parish, to a new area or to a new zone, before he leaves there, he leaves a state-of-the-art church. He builds for God. Jose Yamu established the first mega parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Ebro State. He has helped the church to grow in so many areas. That's why he's called pastor. He didn't get this pastor as a honorary pastor. He became a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Gui Adeboye, laying hands on him to become the assistant pastor. He laid hands on him to become the full pastor in Redeemed, laid hands on him, and for him to become assistant pastor in charge of a province. In regime, uh -uh. that's not something that you can fake. It's not. In his words and action, it is clear he has nothing to hide, nothing to pretend about, and nothing to fear. In the place I find peace is in those states. Not just Benin alone, because there's no part of the state that I don't have friends. I've slept in practically every part of the state. Not just the three territorial districts, but the one that the two works. So I'm very comfortable, I'm deeply rooted. And that's why perhaps I'm so passionate about this place. Because if a place has given you so much, naturally, you want to give the place. I've been to many places. It do can be a lot better, especially when I saw it at an early age, walking. I can't understand why I can't walk now. All you just need is focus sincerity and passion. Once that is there, you will find that, that with the same resources that they said was not enough, you'll be able to do so much. He has associated with the people long enough to be able to know their problems. And he has this ability to forgive. That is one thing that I find so unique. He can forgive anything. And he keeps on saying, this is the Christian spirit. He's a man that has never lived above the people. He's a man that lives with the people and a man that has lived for the people. With leadership comes great vision, responsibility, and more importantly, the need to know what people truly feel and need. What better way to know this than to be born into the same environment, live with your people, experience the world, and ready for a higher form of service through leadership. I'm very passionate about the simple agenda because it represents what I would love to do for a people. And the simple is an acronym. The acronym security and social welfare, infrastructural development and urban renewal, manpower development, public private partnership, leadership by example, employment and empowerment scheme. In summary, that is the simple agenda. It's going to touch all the areas of the simple agenda. It's an agenda that has been conceived over time, well thought of, well articulated, and then put in print. My father worked, and Pastor Isaiah is also ready to work, ready to serve a dollar. I'm very determined to make a legacy, to do something that the posterity will remember me by. I can't hide my passion, I can't hide my love for this place, and I'm determined to give it the best I can. Osaige Izeyamu is truly a man with a vision, tried and tested through different levels of leadership and service to his people, and now ready for the next level.